Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning, class. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Great. So today we're going to be touching a little uh, bit of the violin essential parts because next week we're going to be um, introducing the orchestra, uh, the bigger, the bigger ensemble. You know, have the all kind of instruments. Have four family instruments, right? We have string family, we have uh, woodwinds, we have brass, and we have percussion, right? So today, uh, we're gonna be studying the violin part, as you can see it right here. And we're gonna be starting from the top of the violin, okay? Um, we have a scroll right here. Some, some people call this head, violin's head, but uh, the name is scroll because it looks like a piece of paper or scroll like that, right? Can you see, like you said, like a round shape here? Yes? And then we have the tuning pegs, right? So, why we have four tuning pegs? Can, I, can anybody tell me why does have uh, four tuning pegs? Yes? No? Like to change the sound of the violin? Yeah, to tune the violin, but why four? Yes. How many strings we have in the violin? Four. Four strings. So why four tuning pegs? Because we need one tuning peg for one string, right? So each tuning peg is attached with individual string, right? Now, uh, does anybody know the name of the strings of the violin? Not yet, right? No. All right, very nice. So, uh, the first string is gonna be E, right? Then we have A, right? B, and the last one is G. So maybe you know or not, but we have seven musical notes in the whole world, right? Those are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Seven. The very next note is A again because the cycle uh, goes on and on forever, infinite, right? But we only have four strings on the body. However, you can play all the other notes just by put, uh, putting your uh, fingers on the fingerboard and that's the next piece that we're gonna learn. This black piece over here, it's made by the very hard wood, it's even. Even wood, the, uh, can you see it there? And that's the black, uh, the fingerboard. That's where you put the fingers to press the string all the way down to the fingerboard, right? So that's why it calls this uh, fingerboard, right? So the the first note that you have on the violin, the lowest one, it's G. Yes? Can everybody hear this sound? So G means um, the, the last note on the seven musical notes, the very next note is going to be the first note of the cycle, which is A, right? Now, after A, we have A, B, B C. C. And then after B, C. C. Then next string, which is the next note, is G. B. Very good. Next note is G. E. Then F. And then the last note that we. G. G. Now, what is the very next note? The cycles start again. A. So it's. A. It's A. And then we have. B. Of course, B again. Next one is. C. C. Then. D. Very good. Now the next note, which is coincidentally is the next string of the violin, which is E. e. Yes. Then after E, F. F, and the last note of the G. scale, G. So we just sang together G major scale. Wow, that's awesome. Very good. Very good for you guys. So we already know. This part of the violin, the scroll, yes? Can, every, can anybody? Yes? Scroll, 
tuning pegs. Uh, can you tell me again why four tuning pegs? For each yes. note. One for each. One for each. String. String, string of course. What about the st a string name? What's what's the name of the thin one? Fingerboard. Oh yeah, this is the fingerboard, but I'm talking about the name of the strings. Remember the thin string? Yes. E. e. Yes. E. The second one is. A. 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 Oh. Yes, very good. Next one is like dinosaur. B. And the last one. G. G. Which are some G major scale, right? Very nice. So we know the strings uh, names already on the violin, of course. We know the fingerboard. Um, why they call that fingerboard? Yes? Because you put your hands there. You put your fingers on, on the fingerboard, right? In order to uh, produce a sound, produce a note, specific note. Because if you only play open strings, you're gonna be playing G, B, A, or E. In order to choose another note, you have to push the string down to the fingerboard, right? Very good, very good. All right, moving on, we have the bridge. This is very interesting piece. This is my favorite piece, actually. Because this little piece has a very important uh, role. This holds down the pressure of each string to the violin body. And very interesting uh, detail is that each string produces around 20 pounds down pressure. So we have four strings. How many pounds is going to be that in total? Eight. Eight pounds. Very nice. So it's a lot of pressure. It's, it's amazing, right? I mean, 80 pounds is only this little piece. Ooh, that's a lot. And also, the, one of the main characteristics of the bridge is to transport the vibration of the string all the way down to the violin, violin's body, right? Now, in the body itself, we have a few parts, right? We have the upper part, which is this part of the violin, the, the upper part of the body. We have the waist, which is the C um, a shape of this part of the violin. And then, of course, we have the lower uh, valve. Yes? Yes? You have a question? Sorry. Um, <clears throat> there is something here. Can you, uh, can you see it? Very, yeah. very little. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. some people call this the bottom, like a chair bottom. In this case, they call this M pin, or it can be a tail guard. Why tail guard? Because this, it's the tail piece, and that's why they call this a uh, tail gut because it's holding the tail piece. And this is a very, very, very important part because it's the one in uh, the function of this one is to hold the strings and, and attach it to the violin. And of course, we have four little holes because we have four strings, right? <laughs> and most of the violin, violins have fine tuners. In this specific case, we only have one fine tuner because this is a very traditional, very old violin, and we don't use a lot of fine tuners in, in the old kind of violin, right? But the modern ones have four fine tuners, one for each string, right? That's why we have four. Get four. No? <clears throat> now, uh, of course, we have the F hole. Can, can anybody tell me why they call this F holes? Look closer. What if this uh, tells you? What if this looks like? Yes. Can, can you see? It looks like an F, like F letter, right? So we have two F holes. That's why they call this F holes, because it looks like an F, right? And they are holes. And from these holes is where the, the sounds come from, right? Inside the body, uh, the body of the violin, we have a couple of pieces too that they don't mention right here, but I want you to know. And they are very important too. We have the sound post. The sound post is a little stick. Uh, 
more or less the same uh, fix of, of your pencil, the real pencil, but it's gonna be a lot shorter. It's gonna be like, uh, like an inch or so, uh, you know, the length. It's gonna be like more or less like this. And it's gonna be holding <clears throat> the front top to the back top. Thank you for your pencil. Okay. And it's gonna be in this part of the bridge, holding this bridge leg, and it's gonna transport to the sound from the bottom top to the front top, as well as support the weight of the bridge, which we know already that has a lot of pressure. Can you remember how many pounds more or less? Oh, 80. 80 pounds, that's a lot. Wow. So also, <clears throat> we have a, a bar to similar to the sound pose, but instead to be like vertical, vertical it's gonna be horizontal, and it's gonna be attached to the front top of the bike, and it's gonna be around, you can see it here because it's inside the bike, but it's gonna be around more or less this part, and it's uh, holding the, the other leg of the bridge, and the function of that uh, little stick is to transport the sound from the upper bow to the to the to the lower bow. Yes. So everything has a function in this little instrument. Um, <clears throat> are we missing uh, any uh, a part? A little part here on the fingerboard because not. That has more or less the same function as the bridge. Holds the string down to the violin's uh, neck, right? Now, uh, what about the, the strings? Can anybody remember the, the name of the strings? Yes? G, G right. Next one? A. A, we have A here. D, D very nice. And the last one? G. No, we already said G. What's the letter? E, C. E, remember? So we have E, A, D, and G, all right? How many musical notes we have? Seven. 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 However, we only have four strings, right? Mm -hmm. Comparing with another instrument, for example, guitar has six strings, and piano has ooh, a lot of strings, etc., etc. So, uh, you can basically play any kind of music in the violin. You play. You can play like a modern music, like sad music, like happy music, like dancing music. You can play whatever you want on the violin. If you practice a lot, you have to practice. You have to sacrifice yourself in order to produce uh, a beautiful sound on the violin. I'm gonna try something for you today, <clears throat> and I want you to tell me, I'm gonna be asking you, I, I want you to raise your hand and wait for me to uh, choose you. <clears throat> and I want you to share your feeling, your feelings about what I'm gonna play. I'm gonna be playing a few songs and you're gonna tell me what you think about that, if it's sad, if it's happy, uh, whatever you think it is, all right? So, ready? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. There you go. Tell me, I... Mm. 
how do you feel? Do you feel comfortable or? I feel happy. You feel? Happy. You feel happy, of course, yes. But, yeah, it, it was happy, but comparing with this one, for example, can you feel happier or sadder? Or, I mean, for example, this one, it makes you feel happier or not the happier, right? Meditation time from Thais. It's a very passionate piece, very romantic, right? It's not sad because we have a lot of more samples of sad music. For example, I don't know, uh, like. Uh, that's really sad, right? No, so it's different than this feeling. Like, this is more. I wouldn't explain like happy, more passion. Happy, it's right. That's happy. Okay, what about this? Is that happy? Many of you know what is this piece exactly? Scroll. Who composed that piece? Scroll. Yes? Beethoven. That's Beethoven. And what piece is that? That's one of his symphonies. He made nine symphonies. And this is from the first part of the first movement, which is the fifth symphony. And it's very scary. You know, by that time, he was almost dead. You, you, you know that the Beethoven um, was completely dead by the end of his life, right? So by that time, when he composed the Fifth Symphony, he was almost dead completely. And he felt like, uh, uh, I don't know, like very uh, frustrated about uh, you know, everything. Um, some, some people say that he heard in his mind somebody knocking at the door, like, right? Like, very traumatic, like, and he said, wow, I think it's a good idea if I compose something similar to the knocking of the door, very, you know, right? Right? Okay, what about the loud, loud or soft? Is this soft? That's very rough, right? What about the next part? We we'll go like... Down soft. Mysterious, right? Goes louder and louder and louder. Yes? Yes. That's Beethoven right there. Yeah. A lot of contrast, a lot of drama. Right? Do you know that Beethoven considered himself like a classical musician? However, a lot of people think that he was a transition between the classical period and romantic period. Do you know what is a musical period? No. This when um musicians and music in general are based in one a period of time. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. For example, we have a Baroque period. It sounds very ornamental. It sounds very heavy. For example, the perfect example of that, we can find it in Bach. We can find it in Vivaldi, uh, Handel music. For example, Vivaldi, not a lot of you know like um, uh, Four Seasons. Concert for violin and orchestra, but in Bali, right? Like, um, right? Does that sound sad? No, right? Sounds more like happy, right? 
Well, this is part of the spring, and spring is a very happy time of the year. So that's why Vivaldi chose this uh, little ornamental melody in order to uh, transport you guys to that feeling, to that uh, happy part of the year, right? Uh, in another word, uh, Bach was a completely different kind of composer, and we're talking about the same period of time, the same style of Baroque. However, uh, it's a very different story. Bach is more deeper, it's more traumatic, which you can say. For example, you can find Bach in Baroque, of course, a piece of uh, for violin, uh, the Chacon. It's gonna sound very rough, very uh, dramatic, like. Right? Moving on in music style, just one second, we have the classical period that we just played something in classical, and I think the best uh, example of classical musician we can find it in Mozart. How many of you know Mozart? No. Aha, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He was a very playful child like you, and he was uh, the responsible to this music, right? Right? So you, you can hear, you can feel the difference between classical period and baroque period by playing different kinds of composers, right? And then we have Beethoven, which is a very, very particular case of music. He, <clears throat> he composed a lot of uh, classical stuff, but also romantic too. For example, the Ninth Symphony. How many of you know Otto Yoy? Does this sound like... It's very different, right? Even though it's the same composer. But sounds completely different. Sounds like in the different uh, music style, right? Yeah, One's right. classical and the other one romantic. Right? Yeah. right? Sounds spread. It sounds more passionate, right? Yeah. Sounds more like. And we are using the same sample at the beginning of the class, right? Romantic period, even though it's not the same composer, but it's the same style. So, the conclusion is that you can play any, any kind of music in the Bible. And it's just one little instrument, but it has a very important role in the symphony orchestra. And we are going to be learning that in our next class. We're gonna be learning the string family, especially the violin, the violas, the cellos, the double basses, yes, the harp, of course, and the guitar. Okay, so just to make sure everybody understands, <clears throat> how many tuning pegs we have on the violin? Four. 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 Why? Four, 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 four strings. Of course, one for each string, right? Can you remember the, the name of the strings on the violin? Yes. Yes, the first one? A. Um, e. Well, that's the last one. The first one is E, e. remember? And the second one is? A. Of course, third one, D. and the last one, D. wow, you guys are awesome. All right, uh, any question? No. Yes. Yes? What is that part of the violin? What is what? That, what's that part of the violin? This? No, the one on the Oh, violin. this one. Well, this is a special case because I use this violin to play uh, any kind of music, like I say, and this one is uh, a pickup microphone, so in order to amplify the sound in order to connect the cable and make it louder through a speaker, you need this, this piece. Wow, that's a very interesting um, question. question. Anybody notice this uh, except you? Yeah? I know how to play the violin. You know how to play the violin? Wow, oh, next class we're gonna check that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> of course you have to play for us, all right? So next class, guys. Next class, like I said, we're gonna be touching a more specific roles and parts of violins, violas, cellos, double basses, harps, and of course guitars. We're gonna be um, comparing the difference between those instruments and 
and that's it. Thank you so, so much for your attention and you guys are very good. Alright, so have a good day everybody. Thank you so much.